Okay, so a quick update because it looks like a bit of a bomb site. But um, so the problems we had was no charging, no audio, and the home bar wasn't functioning. We haven't done any of these per se. This is the good board with a couple of minor issues. This is the good body with a board with a lot of issues. So I've taken this faulty board out. We're going to try and transplant this good board, even though it's from a slightly different series. You can see the blue coloration on this one versus the green of this one. But we're going to install it in this shell. Attach the ribbon cables. This is a new power supply. The contacts are better on this speaker. We're going to use this screen, which is the screen from this one, which we've tested is working. And then we're going to use this battery, which is from this one, which we've also tested, confirmed working. Then we're going to try and power the device on, test all the functions. Then we're going to try and charge it. If that still doesn't work, we are going to go back and we're going to bridge the charging fuse. Okay, so managed to get one running. It's got custom keys. Still a work in progress. Um, audio is working. I'm just checking. Okay, joystick's working. So I need to fit this. I need to pull it apart again anyway. Um, all the D pad works. Buttons are working. Um, I do need to install this. And the shoulder buttons are fine, they work okay. I've checked the memory stick is working. Um, the drive does work, but it's a bit noisy, so I might end up uh, swapping some things around. The audio is really bad. So that needs to get go out and I'm gonna put that speaker uh, I'm gonna put this speaker in here see if it makes a difference. But otherwise um, everything is all good. Uh, the only issue now is that I don't think it charges. Although I could be wrong. And no, it does not charge. So that will be the power fuse on the circuit board. So the next step is to pull it back apart, replace the speaker, install the joystick, solder the charging fuse, and then put it back together one last time, adding in all the necessary hardware. We've got a cheap multimeter. It's just set to 200 ohms. You can use any function really. So what you're basically looking for is whether the circuit is open or closed. So a one uh, means that it's an open circuit. And you can see when I touch the terminals together, like so, that reading changes to give you the resistance. So I've just checked the power supply. This is the positive, this main uh, shaft in here. And you can check this pin here on the board. Then the ground, you can actually, there's a little testing window here, which is very handy. I'll just try and get that into focus. So if you just put that into the side, that's the ground side. And again, you can test on this one here. Sorry, my hands are a bit shaky, but that's the plus and the minus, and you can see the colors there. This piece here, this little black with the silver top and bottom, that is the fuse for the charging circuit. And I've just tested it, and it's open. So the only thing we need to do to fix this is to solder something on top. Now, it is quite a small component, but a small blob of solder should do the job. So we're just going to cut away while we do that, and we'll come back with the solder on there, and we'll see if that's fixed the machine.
Okay, so we've soldered the connection there. So now we're just going to do the reverse order basically. So we've reattached all the ribbon cables and we've te checked all the buttons and everything's working fine. Um, so we've installed the battery here. We've replaced the speaker as well. So, so we just replaced that while we were in there. I did try and give the screen a bit of a clean up, but because the shell is um, quite scratched, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Uh, the joystick has been added as well, so that's working properly. And we can test it now by turning it on. You can see here, everything's working fine. So the next step is basically we're going to reinstall all the hardware. So a little bit proud at the bottom, so we'll just snap that back into place there. And um, we're going to put it on charge and we're going to see that beautiful orange light. We'll clean this as best we can and put a screen protector on just to prevent any further damage. Hopefully some of this information has helped. If you've got any questions, let me know. Okay, so we're just going to try and install custom firmware now. Um, so you can see under system information, it's version 6.6. .6. What we're going to do is we're going to connect to USB and we're going to copy some files over and then we're going to run them and hopefully we don't destroy the whole console. So before we connect the USB, uh, go to system settings and format the memory stick. This is optional, but I find it's better to have less junk on there when you're doing this kind of stuff. I've already backed up the memory stack to the computer. Now that it's formatted, we're going to connect to USB. Um, I'm going to use this one here, 6.60 Pro-C2. I've extracted the file. Inside you've got PSP, SDK and SE plugins. As yes, we're going to copy all of this. I'm going to go to paste that in here and we're going to merge. This process is the same on Windows and Mac. Okay. So that's done. Making sure that the card reader is not still flashing and then we just connect here. You want to make sure you've got a full battery when you do this and you want to make sure that you're 100% about the files that are on there because if you don't do this properly you can destroy your console so the flasher do not we're going to delete this all straight away do not use this so now we have two files we have the update and fast recovery so we're going to run the update which is going to crack the software. If you fully power this off or the battery goes flat, 
for whatever reason, you do have to uh, restart, but the fast recovery is all you really need once it's been set up. We're going to select game, pro update. I'm really hoping that this works, because I'm not sure which version the street is supposed to use. I've heard that it's um, Pro C2. Okay, press X to launch the firmware, press triangle to uninstall, or hold L to reinstall. Now we are going to just install it, so we're going to press X. Now it's completed, and we're going to press X again. And hopefully it's going to reboot into the custom firmware. Okay. So that's turned on now. Uh, must have UMD auto start on there. If we go to system settings. Ah, uh, yep, we'll turn that off. That's annoying. If we go into system information, yeah, you can see that it's been hacked now. And from here, you can uh, install any emulators or ISO files, etc. And um, basically, it brings a whole new lease of life to the console. So that was really successful. So that's basically it. Now we're running the custom firmware. So the update folder file itself. Um, it's quite small, so you might as well just keep it on there, uh, just in case it does need to be reinstalled. But essentially, if you did do a hard reset, you would just need to run this fast recovery file. And that's it. So just a couple of closing remarks. We've had the console for a few days now, playing around with it. Uh, you can see it's running a custom theme. The package that uh, I downloaded has Quite a few different options which you just install in the usual manner but they really do add quite a lot of uh, detail and and sort of different uh, interfaces for the console there the great thing with these is you can emulate a lot of different stuff so i'll just quickly run through some of the things we're running at the moment so you've got some isos of the umds uh, this is the godfather we've got this is like a kind of a mystery Japanese game where you travel through time and have to solve your own murder kind of thing um, prevent your own death Guruman, it's a classic adventure style game Sid Meier's Pirates, it's a pirate sim this is an interesting one, it's a visual novel uh, in the style of sort of like an interactive experience it's fully voice acted the, some of the characters voices are a bit annoying but I'm trying to get into it this is a spin-off of a similar series to the previous title and it's a really difficult platformer that I'm still having trouble with but the challenge is quite good. Another few RPGs here that uh, I haven't tried before so this is really just a device to be able to try different things. This is a, a, a chess game but it uses little simulated combat uh, between different units and these factions and it's kind of quirky is another sort of uh, puzzle game a couple of minis these are from the store but they've been uh, unlocked so you can play them it's an RPG title this is like an old paperback uh, fantasy game which actually simulates the dice rolls and stuff on screen this is sort of a halo clone or a ripoff um, cave story it's a classic multi-platform game a scum emulator so you can play the likes of Sam and Max, uh, Monkey Island or Beneath the Steel Sky. This is a Minecraft um, port which does actually work quite well. And then there's Classic Dome which is running at a solid 60 frames which I'm really impressed with. There's a, a sort of a fan mod of Zelda, a Game Boy Advance emulator with a whole bunch of different titles on there. A SNES emulator, a similar kind of thing, and an N64 emulator. Then down the bottom you've got the homebrew sorter which allows you to change the order in which these are displayed and then the update and fast recovery from before. 
So overall this is a very capable system and I've actually spent a lot more time playing it than I thought I would and it's been quite a good experience getting to fix one from scratch and to get it running and, and use it in that way so hopefully uh, anyone who's watching might be able to attempt to do the same and if you have any questions just let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.